I want to be, one day I imagine myself on 95 being like 90 years old and just going, you know, like 40 mile an hour and everyone like, you know, going past me. I'm just like, I paid for this road a long time ago, <laughs> you know, and just one. But here we are in Sunday school and they cut my time way down and so I got to have to rush this morning. And we had to go fast because I look at that Still clock. You see the clock? It's already 1030. <laughs> we ain't even started. So I try to go as fast as I can and give you, give you something spiritual. I hope that everyone could absorb this spiritually as, as fast as you can. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for your goodness, your grace. Lord, we wouldn't be have church if you, want, you, if you weren't here and your presence wasn't here. Lord, we pray that you'd be here amongst us and... Uh, Speak to our hearts, Lord. Have me behind your cross. We bless uh, your holy name. Thank you for all things that you've done for us last year and got us through uh, so much and answered so many prayers. Bless us this year, Lord, to be the witness, testimony, example that we ought to be. Help us to uh, win others and uh, do all that we can do for you. And we ask it and pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're in Ephesians chapter 3. And I'm going to try to go fast. Uh, somewhat because we've got a lot to cover, but it's <clears throat> the you know little bits and pieces in the Bible that it seems like they're so important and we just skim over them. But here in Ephesians chapter three, in verse thirteen, we'll read down through our text because we hadn't done that for the last couple of weeks. Wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom uh, the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would uh, grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, and that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints, what is the breadth and the, the length and the depth and the height, and to know the love of Christ, and here's our key passage right here, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. So we see once again, verse 19, it's not how much that you know about the Bible, it comes down to how much you live of it. That's where the rubber meets the road. It don't matter if you know all about you know this subject matter or that subject matter in the Bible. It comes down to how much you know about the love of Christ and how much you're putting that actually into practice. That's what really makes a difference because if you only were a Christian for one week and you got killed after that, where well, are you going to be going to the judgment seat of Christ and say, well, how much Bible did you learn in that time? No, Did you win anybody to the Lord? How were you living in that just that little short uh, time frame? I mean, that, uh, Stephen, I don't know how long he was saved, but, but I guarantee you one thing, he did something for God in the time that he was saved. Amen. Full of the Holy Ghost, and, it, and he didn't count his life so dear unto him that, you know, he thought, well, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to put myself in, in harm's way and in danger. No, sir. He, he hazarded his life, put himself, and he said, I don't care what these people think. I'm going to preach what God wants me to preach. And if they want to stone me, and we talked about the stones, you weren't here last week. The stones that they had were about the good size of a good sweet potato. Those stones that are laying on the ground. Do you know that as amazing verse that I read just the other day? You know how you skim through the Bible and there's some things that ain't important? Do you know they stoned ox? Now think about this. You know how big an ox is? Do you ever look at a bull or a cow? and an ox, and see how big those dudes are? That's a big piece of beef right there on the hoof. They stoned them if they gored their neighbor. So you think those stones were about that big? You know Paul preached and went to these cities knowing that they might stone him. <sighs> we're talking about this big. If just one of them hits you upside the head, son, you'd be hurting. Probably die right then, but they stoned 
Stephen with heaps. I mean, there was a whole pile. And they just kept hitting him with those, with those stones until he died. That's just a little persecution that Paul received. He got, how many? 196 lashes and beaten with rods and suffered all kind of stuff. And here we are today. <laughs> here we are today. No persecution. You know, padded pews. <laughs> You know, easy right. chair, everyone's talking about the cars and the trucks and the, and the homes that they live in, the boats and all the stuff and all concerned. Wow, we really went from right. one, one stage 2,000 years ago of Christianity, and that's what we look at as quick as we can because we don't have much time, living for Jesus. The first disciples, the first Christians, <laughs> they weren't called because they had a T-shirt or a bumper sticker right. that they were Christians. They were called that because they lived it. They actually were seen as Jesus. What did, how did Jesus live? What was the difference about Jesus and everybody else? That's what we've been looking at. And, uh, of course, we know Jesus, just when he looked at people, he looked at them different. That guy was fixing to whip him. He didn't look at him and said, no, sucker, you're going you're gonna to pay for this. You're going to burn in hell for this. And look at him with those kind of eyes of vengeance. No, he didn't have those kind of eyes. He looked at him and said, I'm doing this for you. I'm actually going to go through this, and I don't hate you for it. I'm doing it because I love you. Like the song says, it, that uh, it was love that nailed him on the tree. It, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't them to do anything. He did that out of his love, his great love for us. And uh, Ephesians, you know, is telling us here that we got to look into that because it's, it is passing knowledge. You, you, you have to understand that that's more important to live like Jesus and to walk like Jesus. And we talked in, in, uh, in church on Wednesday night about the, this, this event that happened in the United States in the 1890s in this church in Kansas uh, that this bum came in and he moved the whole environment of the church just by asking them, like, I'm trying to figure out if you, you guys are real Christians and stuff here and you're really wanting to follow in his footsteps you know prior to that he was knocking on all he didn't know but he was in the neighborhood of that church and he was knocking on everybody's door including the pastor and they're all like well I, we don't have we can't help you out a tramp you know his, his wife died and all this and he's like well we can't really help you. and then he showed up at church and he saw all those people including his landlord <laughs> with all their nice clothes and stuff on and all the money that they had and all that, and none of them can help him. And he said, "I'm not. I'm not understanding. You know, you you guys, you, you say you're Christian, and and then he passed out and he died. I think it was the next day. Imagine that. Lost. He went to hell because he didn't get saved, according to the story. Anyhow, and that impacted that church. They started taking a look into things, and they said, "Wow, we need to check something out here." 309 in your hymn book. You know that song, Dare to Be a Daniel? We don't sing it a whole lot, but you know Daniel, he wasn't afraid of what the, <laughs> you know, the government was saying that you have to do and this and that. And as an old man, they threw him down in that hole. And just like Jesus, he didn't have a bone broken. He came, uh, you know, he came up out of there and, and not, he wasn't hurt. He wasn't injured. He wasn't willing to back down or back up or nothing. He was going to do what God wanted him to do and go through it. You know, it's something amazing. We, lo we talked about suffering last week. Something that, that's good to keep in mind about persecution, even though we don't know nothing about it, is that God can actually take you through that and not feel it. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm convinced that some of the martyrs burned at the stake and didn't feel the flame. I'm convinced of that. You say, why, why would you believe that? Because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went in the fire furnace and they didn't feel nothing. They went, they went in there and they came out. They didn't have smoke on them, smell of smoke on them. So how'd that happen? Daniel went down there. He didn't get eaten up and bitten. He probably got licked by a couple of those lions, but he sure didn't get bitten. He didn't get hurt. So, so you can go through. God might just be testing to see if you, if you are willing to give your life for the cause. You see, just if you're willing, you've got a willing heart to sacrifice a part of your life, to do what's right and, and to go through that. Uh, you know, being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, that, that's not an easy thing for anyone. It's not at all. Uh, you know, Jesus made it sound real simple. He said, just 
take up your cross and follow me. <laughs> Think about that. All the beating and all that he went through, and then carrying that cross. I mean, that ain't. You know, Paul, according to his, we don't know it's to be true, but Peter, I said, Paul, Peter, they say, said, I'm not worthy to be crucified the same way when they came to crucify him. He said, and so they crucified him upside down. Now, I don't know. That's according to his uh, tradition. I don't know, but I can imagine that because you imagine what Peter, he knew. He knew all about the Lord, and he, he knew how much the Lord loved him. He wasn't worthy. We're not even worthy to be, go through a, a persecution equal to the Lord. Right. Imagine that. Right. And But everyone complains about how cold it is or how hot it is in the church, and they complain about, you know, all the little petty things. What? We've got a Bible in our hand with real Christians, right. with, a, with real hearts, who served a real Savior and were willing to give their lives. Amen. So let's look up. Amen. Some of y'all can look up the verses here. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Somebody look that one up for us. Somebody else, Acts 15, 26. Somebody else, uh, Joshua 24. Somebody else, Acts 17. So you can help me out here to get through here. So what does it mean to live by faith? What's it mean to, you know, to serve God, to be a Christian and all that? What does it actually mean? Well, it means giving up something. This year, starting out today is a new year. So you, unless you're perfect and you don't have no sin in your life and you're just a perfect individual, you ought to be stopping something this year. You know, they call it New Year Resolution. But I'm just, I'm, I'm going to tell you what it is. It's called repentance. Stop doing something that you've been doing that's wrong. And start doing something that you hadn't been doing that you should be doing. Start doing that, and <laughs> and that's your, you know, that's your Bible lesson this morning. Amen. We close the Bible. Start doing. I'm going to. I I I got some things in my. I'm going to start doing them and stop doing. It. He said, "Oh, I, I thought you had. No, I ain't got everything 100. percent I ain't, ain't there, but I'm trying to get there. Amen. That's the goal is to be like Jesus Christ, Amen. to be perfect like Him. So uh, dare to be a Daniel, all this. You know, <sighs> I said it before, it ain't easy being a Christian. It's, it's a whole lot harder to be a, a Christian than it is to be a lost person. Shh. You stop from cussing whenever you want to cuss. Right there. That, that just separates all the men from the boys right there. You get out with a hammer and go ahead and hit yourself with a thumb and don't say nothing. Just say, mm, ow, hi, 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 hi. And you want to say all kinds of things. You know, you want to say everything else. I ain't talking about, you know, little 12-ounce hammers that some of you use. I'm talking about a good old 24-ounce hammer with the waffle head on it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Just don't say nothing. Just say, ah. Uh, you know, you say, I deserve that, Lord. I don't know why you allowed that to happen. And it's all purple and black. And that remind you, you know, you need to change some things this year, son. <laughs> you need to get some things right. Amen. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but you know, what, what are you willing to stake? You ever think about that? What are, you, what are you willing to stake as far as a Christian? How far will you go? How much money are you actually willing to give? You know, they're talking about tithe and stuff, that little 10%. Are you willing to sacrifice and give more? That's called offering, by the way. You give <laughs> more. And that's all throughout the Bible. And David said, it, it ain't going to cost me nothing. I might as well not even going to give. So God's given you so much, you know, it, it's, it's greed and covetous to say, well, you know, and we talked about Ananias and Sapphira. Nah, I, can't, I, I can't even believe the judgment, and yet people still go on their lives, you know, like it's no big deal, but they're like, well, you know, did, did y'all really give that much money? We did. Now go ahead and take him out. Ananias. <laughs> And then Sapphira comes in, you know, and did, did you really give that much? You and, and I really gave that much? Yeah, we did. And it's all, go ahead and wrap her up and get her ready, too. Boom. I mean, God, and he ain't playing games. This is not a game. God knows how much money you got and how you're spending it. It's God's money. It ain't your money. You got the ability to make it. You, got, you better thank God that you have the hands and the feet and the arms and the eyes and the ears and everything that you have to even make a dollar. Or invest a dollar, because it ain't yours. And tomorrow, if you die, what are you going to take it? What are you going to take with you? Nothing. <laughs> you ain't taking nothing. Uh, we, what, what are you willing to stake? As far as desires, ambitions, your future, your reputation, and all that. How far 
are you willing to go? Because, you know, a lot of people comes down to a certain thing. They're like, well, I'll do this, I'll do that, but I'm not, you know, I'm not going that far. And there's like a limit to, to people, uh, Christians, and what they'll do and what they won't do. And I'm not saying by being a fanatic. I'm saying just living the right kind of life and doing the right thing. But we got people today, they don't come to church on a Sunday for whatever reason. They're working. I don't let a guy teach or preach if I was a pastor in the church. He can't, he can't even show up for church. On, he's, he said, oh, i got to work today. Shh. Is that really that big of a sacrifice? Whenever we were kids, they didn't even have nothing open in the United States. And that wasn't that long ago. I ain't that old. Come on. <laughs> I mean, think about that. But today, it's like, well, i got to work. You know, ask somebody, Where, where's your husband at? He had to work today. Where's your wife? She had to work today. We got people here tonight right here. You know, on Wednesday, you know, I said it's that. It's the last service of the year. I feel honored that I'm giving the message, but I also feel, you know, kind of sad because, you know, I want to end the year right, and I want to start the year right, not just because it's a year, but the fact is, you know, where's your priority at? Where are you at for living for Christ? Somebody got one of those verses there that I asked to read? Any of them will do. 26. He was listening. Amen. What is it again? And I know, I know this is, I don't know how to say it out of order, maybe out of place to ask you this, but how many of you are willing to actually be to go to the mission field if God called you? I, I've told you before and I joke about it, but it's serious. I mean, I pray, i just as dumb as a box of rocks. But that's what I did. I prayed and I said, Lord, I'm going to put my finger on that map. Wherever it lands, I'll go. And, you know, the earth is two-thirds of water. So I said, and I didn't even think about that back then. But if it landed on water, that means the Lord don't want you to go. <laughs> but I did. And what if it would have been Congo, Africa or something? I would have gone. I would have been willing. Because I got to the state and I said, I'll, I'm willing to go wherever. It ain't my life. And, and I got to that place. I said, I, I'll go wherever you want me to go. And it ended up on Brazil. Well, I don't know how, how am I going to speak. How's a guy as dumb as a box of rocks going to learn a, a language so complicated? All the words are that long. Can't even speak them in English. How is he going to speak them in another language? But God works all those things out. You don't have to worry about that. God tried to explain and tell Israel over and over again, don't, you don't have to worry about that. I'll get you through it. You just trust in me, and I'll do it. I like uh, uh, Hudson Taylor. Trusted in his great faithfulness. It's God who's faithful. He'll, he'll take care of it. It's, it's hard for us to trust. We just got done singing the song. It goes right along with this. Because you have got to trust in God for all those things. Say, I, I can't do that. I can ne- How many of you have ever heard somebody say, I can never learn a foreign language? I never even thought about learning a foreign language. <laughs> Me, Bucky? Foreign language? Uh, what are you talking about? And here I am. And I can speak it now. How did I do it? I got the gift of tongues. <laughs> La la shundai. <laughs> no. And this Lord said, you're going to learn it, son. And I did. I'm going to tell people they need to be saved in this other language. Who's got another verse? Okay, go ahead and read it. Everyone knows Joshua 24, 15. What about 14? Who knows 14? Anybody know Joshua 24, 14? What does that verse say? Because it might be more important than 15. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. Does that make sense? To serve God with sincerity, to fear him, and to do what he has commanded us to do? It sure does. Yeah, me and my house, we should serve the Lord. That's a good verse to put on your house, all that stuff. But the verse before it says, fear God and serve him with sincerity. Right. Be sincere about what you're doing and, and, and all. You know, there's books and all these things, you know, written, Fox's Book of Martyrs and so forth. That, those people that went through that, those, uh, those trials of tribulation and all, persecution, they had some all kind of nicknames, right? Risk takers is one of them. I mean, we're, we're today, we ain't taking no risk. <laughs> we ain't taking no risk financially, you know, physically, 
and all that. We ain't, no, I'm not going to do that, you know, I'll risk my life. Why not? Did, did Jesus risk his life for us? Willingly he did it. He suffered willingly he did it. Think about that. Did any disciples in Acts, who's got the other verse in Acts? Yep, chapter 2 was one of them. 42. And the other one's Acts 14, 22. I don't know if somebody got that one. Can you read the part, first part again? And they continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and prayer. Let me get there. I think you need to read the next couple of verses, but uh, let me and see here. believed together and had all things in common. Yes. Sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. There you go. So let me ask you a question. In verse 46, that that fourth word over there, daily, what, what does that mean? <laughs> does anybody know what that means, daily? Can you imagine coming to church every day? I mean, of course, uh, most of us live in a distance, but let's say we all lived in the same town here and didn't live that far away, and we go out every day. That's something. People can't even make it out half the time, and now... We read something in the Bible, the old-time Christians, where well, they were into it. Were they fanatics? No, they just loved the Lord, and they were just doing what they were supposed to be doing. It, it, you know, there isn't like a vacation that you take from, right. from God. Right. And all, What's Acts 14, 22? Does somebody have that? You know, and I know I don't have a whole lot for you to this morning in, in some regards. You know, C.T. Studd, if you've ever read anything about that guy, here he was, he had a career. I mean, this guy, he was a famous cricket player. I mean, he was the best. He was one of the best players out there. But it came to a point, he said, I don't care about none of that no more. I'm going to serve God. He went all over the world preaching the gospel. And he, he said uh, several different things. One thing he said was one... Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Amen. I mean, there, there's a lot of thinking and all has to go into when you're going to surrender your life. We, we have so many young people in the church today. They're all, they're all talking the same thing. And it's been like this for years now. I'm going to be this. I'm, right. going, I'm going to join the Marines. I'm going to join the Navy. I'm going to join the Army. I'm going to be, you know, a doctor. I'm going to be this. But where are they at that's saying... I'm going to serve God. Amen. We talked about David. David was a young man. That's how he, he was such a great man. And God said and mentioned him so many times, that man David, because when he was a young boy, I believe it's not written in the Bible. There's a lot that's not written in the Scripture for a, a intimate reason. God wants you to have that personal relationship with him so you can see other things and he'll show them to you. David, as a young man, was playing that harp out there in those hills with those sheep. And saying, great is thy faithfulness, Amen. great is thy mercy, great is thy goodness. Great. And God, I'm going to make this boy my king someday. Think about it. As a young man, God does the promoting. He took him because he knew he could use him. He said, this is, this is the kind of person I want. Amen. This guy Saul, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he don't know it, but he's already impeached. Amen. <laughs> he's on his way out. He's going to be under. They think they got a king. They want a king. I'll give him a king. They ain't going to like him. I'll give him one. Then when David come in, but David, had he was a what? A man after God's own heart. How do you figure that out? Because he didn't have his own desire, like, I'm going to do this, my own ambition. He didn't say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to be this, I want to be. No, he said, God, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? And he just stumbled, you know, into a battle or a fight with this giant. He just showed up. He was delivering cheese. 
right? He was deliver, delivering something for his brothers, and, and, the, and he said, what's going on here? He didn't purpose it. One day I'm going to be, uh, you know, uh, this kind of soldier. I'm going to be a, a professional soldier. I'm going to be, you know, uh, in the elite. I'm going to be a uh, Delta Force guy, you know, with a knife in my mouth and all this. I'm going to sneak. I'm going to do all. No. He was far from that. His, his mind was just humble. He shows up and he's like, you know, a skinny. The Bible calls him a stripling. You know, he's just a skinny little kid. And he's like, what's going on? And then he sees this big guy out there. However many feet, I don't know, 15 or 16, I, I don't know how tall that he was, that, that he had, you know, but he was a big guy. Something like that, nine foot six and, and could pick up sticks and, and break you like you was one of them. But this guy, bad dude, and David go, who's that? And then you could hear him cursing God. He's like, wow. Well, imagine David out there playing on his harp and singing to God. He said, he's cursing my God? Whoa, he ain't getting away with that. Put his harp down and said, what, what happens to the guy that goes and takes this guy out? Well, this, that, but you can't do it. <laughs> you ain't equipped it. You ain't, you're just a kid. You're just young. You ain't, there ain't no way you can do it. Yeah, you're exactly right. David said, you're right. I can't. I can't. You're exactly right. They didn't even understand where he was at with his fellowship and relationship with God. He said, of course I can't, but I know who can. Amen. And, I, and he can do it. He can use me. I'm just, a, I'm just a clay, but I know the potter. Amen? He said, I, 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 I can't do it. You're right. But God can take him out. Buddy, that, that little stone that he used, I don't think it was one of the big ones like that they used to stone the, 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 uh, the brethren with. It was just a small one, but it was like a 30 yacht 6 and it hit him right between the eyes and knocked that giant down, and David stood on him. That shows you the size of David compared to him. Stood on top of him. And then took his head off. Imagine that. So all things are possible. Yeah, you see this. I saw it just Friday. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthen me. Can you? In what kind of way? Lifting weights up, you know, these right. <laughs> power lifters and body. I can do all that. ain't talking about nothing like that. Right. Right. ain't talking about nothing like that. It's talking about spiritually, you can umber, overcome this spiritual warfare Knowing who your enemy is, the devil, and, and you, can, you can actually accomplish something spiritually. You can actually win people to the Lord, and you can actually be doing something productive for, for the Lord's sake if you can be there with him. Did somebody else have the other verse? Acts 17. Did we read that one already? 27. Acts 17, 27. What does it mean to live by faith? You know, we sing all these songs, and I talked about that last week. You sing that song, and I surrender all. Well, the problem is that all but, right. we, I surrender all but this and that. Because they ain't all surrendered today. They ain't just all willing to just, to just give up a lot, right. you see. I surrender some is maybe what we, we should change the hymn to. I surrender some. Yeah, because... <laughs> Oh, that's a, that's a big word right there. It's my favorite word in the Bible. All my sins are forgiven, amen, and, and all these things. Uh, but that's a, big, that's a big thing to sing right there. Uh, Acts 17, 27, somebody got that? If you can, if you can, and we talked about it, there's two kinds of Christians. What kind of Christians are there in the Bible? It's only two kinds. It ain't saving lives. That you know, ain't right. That's two kinds of people in the world. But there's only two kinds of Christians in, in the Bible, and there still are in the church to this day. It's carnal. Everyone knows that one. And the other one is spiritual. And that spiritual man, it's not that he knows a lot of Bible. It's not that he does all these things, you know, because you could do that to be seen to men. But it's his relationship with God, his personal relationship with God, and he knows where he stands with God. What is that verse again? You still got it there? Yep. Acts 17, 27. If they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. I honestly believe this with all my heart, that the, that the men of God that were closest throughout history, the close to God, they didn't think the Lord was very far from him. He was right there. You, you read about uh, 
and I know some of them is Calvinist, some or whatever, but Billy Sunday, they say he talked to the Lord all day long. I do now, but I didn't know. All, I've been saved for 37 years, but I can tell you for a long time, many years, I didn't, I didn't talk with the Lord every day. He talked with the Lord when he was shaving, every, just, well, Lord, and that, he, he understood that he was not very far. He was near. <laughs> you think David had that? You think that David felt that the Lord was very near? So I'll tell you what, if you're going up against a guy like Goliath, you better hold him. <laughs> He's right behind you or right in front of you. I would say more in front of you, amen, because you ain't tackling that guy. You ain't taking him down without his help, you see, and not very far. Well, the sad thing is a lot of Christians, God is far from them. You see, so nearer my God to thee when that Titanic, that ship was sinking, people were saying that. But the real true question is how near were some of them? I mean, to God, not to dying. How near to God are you? And I don't say that, you know, I'm, I'm, I've arrived, I'm here. No, because i got a lot of work to do on me. Just like my mama said, the, the largest room in your house that, that, that you have is the room of an improvement. <laughs> so you need to get to work because you've got a lot of improvement to make. And, and that's where we need to be at. If Jesus Christ be God and died for me, then no sacrifice can be too great for me to make for him. C.T. Studd. Again, I have this in my Bible note. He is no fool that loses that which he cannot keep to gain that which he cannot lose. Everyone's, you know, not wanting to lose nothing. They don't want to go out on a limb. I've been on a limb uh, uh, quite a few times, <laughs> physically and spiritually, amen? And, and I tell you what, it's not a, an easy feeling to be out on a limb, especially with a chainsaw or something. But you get out on a limb spiritually, and the devil's out there, and he's like, yeah, you fixing to fall, son. You're going down. <laughs> you're going down. We got you now. We got you going down. You imagine how many, I can't even imagine, I honestly can't, the people that died at the stake or in some kind of situation like that, the devil's saying, yeah, you're gonna, we, we're going to hurt you. But what, do you, what would a person, what should a person, a Christian that loves God, think about in those final those final moments. Lord, get me through. This is only going to be a short, it's going to be painful. You know, you know what the world does? This is the news. If you like to listen to the news, pay attention to one thing that they do. There could be thousands of people dying from whatever, right? From a sickness, disease, or some disaster. But here's this one person that fell out of a helicopter, and that's on the headline of the news. Right. And no one even knows who the guy is. He ain't even no president or nobody important, but they want to put that out there. Well, how about this? How about a Christian that dies a unique death? Right. I'm like in line for that. I'm like, well, let me die this way for the glory of God. Amen? Amen. God, that's, that, that right there has some uh, value to it. If it's, if it's true and it's sincere of the Lord. And we got brethren that's in India, Pakistan, Egypt, and these other countries, mostly Muslim-run countries. They are. They are. They've been burned to burned alive. They've been. They they have been. They have suffered and stuff. Well, how about them? Put yourself in their shoes. What if you was over there, and they was fixing to kill you like that? What what? How would your attitude be? And how would your heart be? It's only going to be for a little while. I mean, you're in. You're in the presence of God, absent from the body, present with the Lord. That's how you got to think about it. I th I would I would think so. It ain't going to be long. You're going to suffer for this period of time, but the Lord. You know, we looked at that. The Lord suffered for six hours up on the cross. And ain't no telling how long before that, when they were hitting on him and whipping on him and everything else, how much total time. But that's a long time to endure. I mean, and he didn't deserve not one minute of it or second of it, you see. So we, we ought to have this willing heart to, to be able to uh, suffer for the Lord no matter what. I mean, we, we, and, and I, like I said before, I preach the message to myself. You get out there in that traffic and stuff, and somebody does something wrong. There ain't even no sense in complaining. Just do like David did when Shimei came up and, and, and started cussing him out. Which, you know, that was uh, in the law, it was written not to curse the king. That was <laughs> the death penalty right there. Yeah. 
And let me go, go and take his head off. No, just leave him go because I probably deserve that. So if somebody cuts you off, just remember back when you was younger and you probably cut a lot of people off. <laughs> just remember, well, I deserve that. Because you got to move. You got to change your attitude and all. If you want to get to where you're supposed to be at, your walk with the, right, with the Lord, you got a lot of changing to do. I got a lot of changing to do to con- conform to his image, to walk in his steps and to follow Christ. It's not an easy task, but where we need to be heading this year, and the Lord might come back. Everyone's telling the Lord coming back, the Lord coming back. Well, what about all your lost loved ones, your, your neighbors, co-workers, and, and all them? I mean, you wouldn't want to just get raptured out and leave all them behind to go to hell, would you? So you need to get busy and try to win as many as you can Amen. so they'll go with us. Amen. Like I said uh, many a times, I want to be the guy that's winning somebody to the Lord just before the rapture, and it'd be the last person to get saved. And then the Lord said, come on up. I, I probably won't be, but I, I have the desire. That's how I want to leave out. To me, I want to be in church when the Lord comes back. I don't. I want to be in the battlefield. Amen? Take a break. Went overtime, but nobody else busted the doors down. <laughs> if you have any questions about the Sunday school, Brother, Brother Baker is here, so you can ask him.